In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the tension and reaction force at a pivot. The question reads, set up a 300 Newton strut, 14 meters long, and with a cable as shown below. Find the tension in the cable and the reaction force at the pivot. So the cable is shown right here, and the pivot is located at the base, at the base of the strut and the floor. There are several ways that you can start answering this question. For me, I'll start with a free body diagram. So the strut is right here, and I'll represent it by this diagonal line. The strut is exerting a force in the opposite direction. So if that's the floor, it's exerting a force in this direction. And if there's a force going in that direction, this force can be broken down into its X and Y components. The X and Y components are important here because this is an equilibrium type problem. So when it comes to equilibrium type problems, the sum of the forces along the x-axis all sum up to zero, and the sum of the forces, their components, along the y-axis sum up to zero. So we can break this down into its components, where we have one going directly down and one going in the direction to the left. Now if there's a force going down, then there's an equal and opposite force going up. And similarly, the same idea applies to this vector, where if there's a force going in this direction, then there's an equal and opposite force going in the opposite direction. So I'm more concerned about this magnitude and that magnitude moving forward, because I'll eventually add them up to find out the resultant F. I'll call this force F sub V for vertical, and this one F sub H for horizontal. So to make things clear, I'm more concerned about the forces that the floor exerts on the strut as opposed to the opposite way around. Furthermore, there is a pulling force along this cord, this cable, which makes 40 degrees with the horizontal. So that's 40 degrees, and there's a pulling force going in this direction. We'll call that pulling force tension, because that's what tension is. And every vector can be broken down into its components, as I said. So those components will be at 90 degrees to one another, I can represent it with a vector like this and another one like that. So that's the Y component and that's the X component of T. So that's T sub X and that's T sub Y. There's also a weight hanging down and that weight is 2000 Newtons. So when it comes to adding up the forces along the vertical, we would have to include that as well in addition to the weight of the strut, which is 300 newtons, and that's given in the question. That being said, let me write down that the sum of the x components equal to zero, and the sum of the y components equal to zero. This one is going up, and we'll call up positive and down negative. So if I want to write down the forces along the vertical, I'll say Fv plus, and we have two forces here, one that is the weight of the object being 2,000 newtons. I'll write that down as negative 2,000 and T sub Y, which is the Y component of the tension. I'll write that down as T sub Y and it's being subtracted. And there's one more force that we need to consider, which is the weight of the strut. And that was given in the question as 300 newtons. That's going to go directly down from its center. And so I'll write down minus 300 is equal to zero. Let's do the same thing for the x components. So we have F sub H, that's going to the right. I'll make that positive and anything that goes in the opposite direction will be negative. So I'll write down minus T sub X is equal to zero. These are two very important equations that we'll be using to help solve the overall question being the tension in the cable and the reaction force at the pivot being right here. The next thing that I want to do is rewrite the T components of these equations in terms of T using trigonometric ratios. By rewriting them in terms of T, the equations become more useful for what it is that we're looking for, being the tension, instead of the tension along the X or Y axis. So let's start by replacing T sub Y with what it is. You see this vector right here that represents T sub Y? Well, I'll just temporarily place it right there and Noticing that this is 40 degrees, that means that's 40 degrees as well because they're alternate angles. The trigonometric function sine is used to compare the opposite length with the hypotenuse. The opposite being T sub Y 
and the hypotenuse being t. So if I say sine at 40 degrees, opposite being t sub y, and the hypotenuse being t, multiplying both sides of this equation by t, I get t times sine 40, and that's my new expression in place of t sub y. I can apply the same idea for t sub x. In fact, if I do, I should end up with capital T times cosine of 40 degrees is equal to T sub x, and that will be in place of that. I'll have F sub v minus 2,000. That gets replaced with minus T sine 40 minus 300 is equal to 0. And taking all of these terms over to the right side, so that I can eventually solve for F sub V and use that to find out the force. F sub V is equal to positive 2,300. I went ahead and combined it with this 300, which also gets moved over. Minus T sine 40. And replacing that with what it is, we get F sub H is equal to t times cosine 40. As you can see, we have two equations with three unknowns, making it impossible to solve. So we'll need a third equation that relates the torque. At equilibrium, the sum of all torques acting in the system must equal to zero. So I've represented torque with the Greek letter tau, and since torque is a vector, I've put these lines around the variable to suggest that we're looking for its magnitude. Now there are two points of interest here for us to calculate torque. We calculate it midway through the length of the lever arm, and this is the lever arm, the strut, and midway is right here. And we also take the point at the very end to calculate the torque. So the distance from here to here, which is seven, gets multiplied to the force that is perpendicular to the lever arm. The force that's perpendicular to the lever arm is represented by this arrow. And the same thing applies over here. So we have a torque going in this direction, which is 90 degrees to the lever arm, and also one going in the opposite direction. And the reason why this one exists is because of that weight that is hanging off of this cord. So we need to consider torque in both ways. Now we need to come up with an expression for this vector. And for that, you need to use a little bit of geometry. For example, this is 60 degrees. And if that's 60 degrees, and if we create a right triangle here, that makes that 90 degrees, and this smaller angle here, 30 degrees. If that's 30 degrees, then this pocket is 60. So using cosine, which compares adjacent and hypotenuse, hypotenuse being the magnitude of this vector, which we know to be 300, given in the question. Using cosine, we have cosine at 60 degrees is equal to the adjacent, representing that dashed vector, over the hypotenuse of 300. Solving for ADJ, we end up with 300 times cosine 60, and that gets multiplied to the radius being 7. So we found one expression for the torque. Now we need to do the same thing for this one and for that one. Again, we need to use some geometry to come up with the angle from here to here. We want that greater angle so that we can relate it to T. Now if that's 60 degrees, that makes the angle from here to here 60 as well because they're alternate angles. Therefore, this smaller pocket is 20 and given that this vector is 90 degrees to the lever arm, if that's 20, that's 40, then this one right here is 30 degrees. Remember, using this greater angle, we now have 70 degrees. We'll be using cosine again, because we're looking for that and we know the hypotenuse. Cosine 70 degrees is equal to the adjacent which is what we're looking for, and the hypotenuse being t, multiplying both sides by t. t times cosine 70 multiplied to the radius of 14.
because it's 14 meters from here to the pivot. Now again, one more time for this one. And if you use some geometry, you'll find out that this angle is 60 degrees. We won't go into detail with that. So the expression here, again, we'll use cosine. And this time we'll be relating it to this vector, the one that's in purple, which is 2,000 newtons. So we know the magnitude of that, makes it easier for us. Cosine at 60 degrees is equal to the adjacent times the magnitude of that vector that I pointed out. We multiply both sides by 2,000. And then we multiply this by the radius being 14. We have three expressions for the torque. We'll say that going in this direction is positive and going in that direction is negative, but by all means you could do it the opposite way around. So if these two directions are positive, I'll be adding up these two and subtracting that one. This is what the equation should look like and this will be your third equation that we need. We need to solve for t. It's not hard to do. We'll take that expression over to the right side. We'll evaluate what that is on our calculator. And here's how to do that. 2,100 times cosine 60 plus 28,000 times cosine 60 makes 15,050. And then we divide both sides by cosine 70 times 14. Cosine 70 times 14, and we get a final answer of 3,143 newtons. 3143, that's what represents the tension, and it's in newtons. Taking into account significant figures, this could be rounded down to 3140 newtons. And I'll be using that and substituting it in to this t and that t to come up with these two f values. If you do that correctly, F sub V and F sub H will equal to the following values. All right, so we found out the magnitude of this black one and that black one. And if we want to find out that magnitude, the force magnitude, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Pretend that you have a right triangle and you have the magnitude of these two lines. Let me show you what I mean. So that's 2, 1, 4, 0. And that one is 4, 3, 2, 0. We're looking for the magnitude of the hypotenuse, which we'll call F. Using the Pythagorean theorem, substituting that in for A and that for B, you get a C value that's equal to 4,950 newtons. 4,950 newtons. And of course, you can also find the angle if you like. Let's assume that they are. If they are asking for it, then you would use tangent at this point because tangent relates the opposite and adjacent. And the angle would be 61 degrees. So just to show you, inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent would give you the following angle. And so there you have it. That is how to find the tension and reaction force at a pivot.